What's going on, everyone? This is the end of the year, which means I get to rip on a bunch of movies. This is the top 10 worst movies of 2018. My viewpoint, of course. Um, I have seen over 2018 films this year. Um, there are so many movies that I still missed. Um, you know, it just kind of slipped under the cracks. But of the 200 plus films I've seen, uh, these are the films that were the worst of the year for me. Um, it will obviously go from 10 to one, one obviously being the worst film of 2018 to me. Um, before I get into that though, I am gonna give a lot of dishonorable mentions because again, I did see over 200 plus movies and there were a bunch that I gave half to one star rating. So I'm gonna mention those, they're dishonorable mentions, of course. So quickly mentioning, Every Day, Peter Rabbit, uh, Insidious, The Last Key, Winchester, uh, Movie Passes, Gotti, um, Kings, The Miracle Season, the Hurricane Heist, Midnight Sun, Action Point, A Wrinkle in Time, and of course, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. That honestly almost made my number 10 slot. Um, but going right into my number 10 slot, there was a film that was worse than Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, and that's because of the potential of the filmmaking. You have a director, Peter Berg, who's really good with Patriot's Day, Lone Survivor. Um, you have Mark Wahlberg. You have the guy who was in the Raid films. I love those films if you don't know that. Um, and you have a poorly edited, shaky, jerky camera work type film that has a stupid storyline that just is literally setting up for the next film. That's Mile 22. Mile 22 was quite disappointing, again, with all the reasons I just mentioned. But it's also just mind-boggling because it's an R-rated film. And with an R rating, you can show blood. I get it with a PG-13 movie why there would be the herky-jerky cam work that's like as if it was filmed by Michael J. Fox. But with that being said, when it's R-rated, you can show all that stuff. So it's like, why have it where you can't tell what's going on? Especially given that you have not only the guy from the Raid films, but you have also the stunt coordinators from the Raid films. Doesn't make any sense, honestly. Um, number nine is a film that easily the worst anime film of the year. Um, that I have been to work for at least, and that is Sherlock Gnomes. This is a film where the voice acting wasn't even that good. Um, very phone it in type ish thing. I feel like I could have done a better job, and I hate when I say that because it's like I'm not a voice actor, but I feel like I could have done a better job. Um, also, the animation really wasn't that good. The storytelling was very dull. Um, the 90 minutes really sludged by. It had some of the worst cliches I've seen. It was very, very dull. I, it's a couple minutes in, I was like, I think I know everything that's going to happen. Of course, I did. But uh, number eight is a film that I'm probably going to have tomatoes get thrown at me, um, especially on Sundays. And that is uh, God's Not Dead 3, A Light and Darkness. I hope this is the final chapter in this series. Uh, this film was very preachy, of course, filled with bad performances. Um, you know, like I was saying, wonky messages, an ending that really wasn't satisfying, um, pacing that felt very awkward. It just was not a good film at all, and it was very hard to watch, especially because most of the audiences were clapping throughout the movie, and it's like, what is this? Like, what is this? A blockbuster? Like, I clapped, I clapped, I clapped. It's like, okay, this isn't, this isn't a sermon, you know? I, I mean, I guess a lot of people take it as a sermon, but it's like that's what Sundays are for, and Wednesdays. You know, this, this is a film. You know, we're supposed to be experiencing this story, not a sermon. At least that's just my opinion. But speaking of sermon, number seven is a film that I felt like was just a sermon for all these people that like Broadway shows and musicals. Don't get me wrong, I like musicals, but this film just literally felt like it was a jerk off to those type of movies. And that's of course, Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. And I'm waiting for the tomatoes to get thrown at me. I, I hated this film. First of all, the first film didn't even answer this question. Who is the father? Second of all, the second film didn't even answer that question, and it was the same story. Except that Sharon, who in the final act was jerking off the audience by saying, like, look at me, I can sing and dance, I'm 70 years old, but I look like I'm 50. It's like, good for you. Like, you know, if I if I could afford it, I could get plastic surgery too at your age, but I can't. And, you know, it's just one of those things where the film just, it halts everything. And I get it, it's a musical. I do like musicals, but it just halts everything in the final act for showcasing this. It's like, oh, my goodness. Why am I watching this? You know, and the storytelling is so weak. The music isn't even that good. I was watching this film with a bunch of old people as well as these young teenage girls. And I don't mean to be sexist, but I'm just saying it how it is. That was the audience. I was the only dude and I was just watching this and I was thinking in my mind, 
oh, why can't every film be like La La Land? That's literally what I was thinking while watching this film. So, mic drop. Anyways, now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Number six is the latest film on this list. Um, it came out in November. It's a film that does the carnal sin. I call it the passenger's flaw. Because passengers did this first, at least from what I noticed, where you have... You have the audience know everything before the characters do, and thus making certain scenes really stupid. Like when you have an opening scene showing an exorcism, and then in the in the middle, literally they explain that whole thing, and it's like, well, fudge me. If you didn't even have that beginning scene, this would have been a good mystery. And then when you actually reveal that, it would have been like, oh, that's why this person's doing that and that. As well as this film wasn't scary. The jump scares were so ineffective. Uh, the cinematography wasn't even that good. It's actually pretty bad in a lot of spots. CGI was very laughable. It's just a film that was a misstep in every, every means of the way. But there's a film that was worse. That was also a horror film. Uh, well, horrifically funny. Um, that is Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare is a film that, uh, it's a PG-13 horror film. So going into it, I had low expectations to begin with. But watching it, I was like, this is hilarious in the worst of ways. Like This is, this is this year's, Happy Death Day, for me. I know a lot of people like Happy Death Day. I hated that movie. Truth or Dare was worse than that movie. And worse because it does the cardinal sin of having an ending where it literally shoots the film itself in the balls and the foot. And this film, it wasn't ballsy. It had an ending that just was, it seemed as if it was written by a sister who was like, I still this. And it's like, no, no, no. Let the 60-year-olds write the scripts because they can actually probably have an artistic intent tests to this but of course of course not we had a six-year-old write the script because it's truth or dare you know but again what was i expecting um number five is actually no, not number five number four i should say this is a film that every time i saw the trailer i wanted to shoot myself i kid you not every time and i would always turn to my girlfriend and be like you want to come with me with this and she's like absolutely not and watching the film from the very beginning i was like why am I doing this? And that is Overboard. Overboard is a film that is not only sexist for thinking that a woman needs a man, even though throughout the beginning of the movie, it's clearly shown that she does a good job of parent. She is a good parent. But she then meets this rich guy who then gets amnesia and, like, you know, they fall for each other. And it's like, it just goes to show that it's like, oh, you know, I'm making this rich guy fall for me. And it's just like, it's so annoying. It, I, and I don't usually say this about movies, but I, I truly believe that that film was sexist. And not only that, it's a film that is so paint by numbers with the comedy, you know, stereotypes that it just, it made me want to throw up, honestly, watching the film. And Ferris really was not good in the film either. It, it was such a gag-worthy film. I, I did not find any of it funny. I found it offensive. And I don't get offended, really. It's just a film that every time I think about it... In fact, the one time I went over to my parents' house, my mom told me she just saw it. And I was like, uh... She's like, well, you don't like it? And I was like, no, I hate it. I went on a rant. And that's my mom. You know, I don't want to go on a rant to my mom, but I did because I hate that film. Which is why I'm surprised it wasn't my number one. But... We'll get into that. There were three other films that were worse. So number three is... I, I don't even know what this was. I'll describe it at first. Number three is a film where you have three guys who go to a strip club, who get ice cream, you know, for like five, ten minutes of the film and are basically jerking off Italy for their ice cream. Um, you know, it's an event where... That actually lasts like 30 seconds on a train. That's the 1517 to Paris. Clint Eastwood, I like Clint Eastwood. Unforgiven's a masterpiece. Million Dollar Baby's a masterpiece. Mr. Grimm is a masterpiece. So what went wrong with this film? Well, you casted the people that actually did the event. Uh, that's the first problem. They're not good actors. You know, this is a film after all. You have focused on all these events that just are just padding because again this is an event that's like literally 30 seconds you know it could have been a short you also have these like terrible terrible lines of dialogue like, i hate the line i really do hate the line where it's like my god is bigger than your disease uh, or, or your statistics it's like really it's like that's not really how it works it's like it was so annoying cringeworthy thankfully the mule was passable but still at 1570 to paris if you want a good laugh definitely worth watching 
But again, it's based on a true story. So you're watching this film, wanting to take in information that you might not have known. But the problem is, you could have just gone on the internet and just looked at it and be like, wow, I just saved 90 minutes. So anyways, uh, number two is a film that has a lead actress that I do like. Um, she was excellent in Suspiria. But unfortunately, this, uh, this, this entry... Final entry of the trilogy just cemented it as one of the worst trilogies I have ever seen. And that is the Fifty Shades trilogy. Look, BDSM, it's, it's a topic that many people don't want to talk about. But I truly believe that that is a topic that I feel as though could work in a film if you actually analyze it correctly and not just make it a jerk off of Twilight because this is literally Twilight porn fiction literally it's not done well at all and like I said I feel as though the material should be done well and unfortunately it's not I feel as though if an art house filmmaker got the material of this BDSM topic I feel as though it would be done really well but unfortunately it's not and instead you have a laughably bad film a film that makes no sense you have someone that wants Christian Grey's lifestyle, uh, but yet he himself is rich enough to be able to get out of jail where a bail would have been like, what, $500,000? How is that possible? You know, uh, you claim that Christian Grey stole your life, yet you yourself are rich enough to be able to get yourself out of jail? Get out of town with that noise. That's annoying. You know, I hated this film, and I honestly thought it was going to be the worst film of the year for me. But then I believe it was a month or two later I sat down in the theater um, to see a film that, you know, I was like, yeah, what the heck, why not watch it? You know, the trailer looked interesting. It could be could be like Gone Girl. Um, and as I was watching it, I was like, wow, these trailers are misleading and not in a, a good way. Like, I like it when a trailer is misleading and it subverts expectations, but I hate it when a trailer doesn't do it. It does the opposite, where it makes you just hate the film. You hate it for everything that it's going for. You hate the characters. You hate their motives. You hate the twists. You hate how there's a long take in the opening scene, but there's something off about it. I hated with the passion Tyler Perry's Acrimony. This was an atrocious film. Whenever I hear this film mentioned, it boils me to no end because I just know that it's a film that so many people can get behind, but shouldn't get behind, to me at least, because of the messages that it promotes. It just does so much toxicity. It is so 20th century. It's backwards. This is the type of film that I would expect in like the 50s, you know, but done by like a, a schlock director, which Tyler Perry is, let's face it. Instead, it's done in the 21st century, so this material, this schlock material, should not be shown. It should not be approved in today's day and age, but unfortunately, it is. And with that being said, again, I'm not saying that the material could have been done well. I think it could have been. I think it could have been in better hands. But at the same time, you have terrible characters that are neither likable nor artistically merit-worthy, but you also have a script that just is repeatedly stupid with its attention or lack thereof of details. And you have an ending that is just shooting not only itself with the balls and foot, but also the eyes. Because literally the rest of the film, I felt like it was like a guy that literally didn't even have feet and was just walking around blind. That's literally what this film reminded me of. It was annoying to watch. It was a film that I hate. I can go on and on and on. I could probably make up words of what this film is and what it means to me. But alas, I'm not going to, because you can only imagine. Um, yeah, that's my list. Um, guys, what did you think of the year 2018 with films? What are some of the worst films of 2018 that you've seen? And if you have seen any of the films that made my list or dishonorable mentions, let me know your thoughts on those films in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and also, again, I love the support that you guys give me. I really do appreciate it. And I'll uh, catch you guys later.